If you're watching this video, then you already know I am HIV positive. Alright. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Ayo Binks. Um, anyway, it's been a while. It's been over a year since I last posted on my channel. But the purpose of this video today is to be informative, logical, and just give you guys a glimpse of my day-to-day -day life and what it's like living with HIV, being HIV positive. So, all right, let's get to it. Um, basically, the last video that I posted, which I'll link somewhere um, on this video, was when I got punched in the face. And that was the last night. Oh my gosh, I look at that video sometimes and I just start crying <laughs> um because that was the last night that i was hiv negative that was the night that my life changed and it was just more than a black guy but i'm not going to talk about the events of that night i'm not going to talk about the person that infected me because i just don't want my first video back to be about that person i went viral from a live so a lot of people that don't know me had a lot of things to say was judging me i even received death threats because I went public with the information that I went public with and I have no regrets I wish I would have done it sooner you know what I'm saying but here we are and um, I want to really talk about my symptoms and um, some real numbers some real science my test results and things of that nature I took down some notes so that I could stay focused and not veer off to like the emotional side but if I do I, it's gonna be genuine it's gonna be raw I just want to stay on topic because yeah so I got a little nervous throughout this video you're gonna hear me talk about the viral load count right and cd4 cells the dope cells that fight off viruses okay the reason why i'm going to talk about this is because hiv what hiv does is when it enter the, enters the body via this is not very common anymore okay so an infected syringe meaning like if you take drugs or blood transfusion um is very outdated it doesn't really happen and if it does what the fuck i'm so sorry um so that's one way another way and the most common way is via sexual fluids so uh semen and vaginal fluids okay and this is you could get hiv from oral anal and um vaginal sex okay so this is not just a disease or a virus that is in one particular community or another literally if you are having this sex you are vulnerable to getting this virus or this disease especially if you are not on um, prep medication which is a uh, medication that prevents you from getting hiv even if you do come in contact with someone that has it or if you are not using protection you know what i'm saying so that's how i got it another way is via birth so if a mother that was unmedicated, right, so she wasn't on any antivirals um, medication, uh, she gave birth and she passed it on to her child. Again, this is not very common anymore. It was more common, you know, 20 plus years ago. Uh, but still, there's a lot of people living with HIV that did not get it through uh, sexual contact, but in fact um, got it because of their mother, okay? So, like I mentioned, CD4 cells protect you from viral infections, help other cells fight bacterial and fungal infections, produce antibodies, fight cancers, and coordinates the activities of other cells in the immune system. So, CD4 cells are very, very important to having a healthy immune system. If your CD4 cells or T cells are compromised, your entire immune system is heavily compromised because it cannot fight even the smallest, simplest bacteria that we come across day to day, it won't be able to fight that bacteria and it can cause serious damages to your body and in many cases, if untreated, can cause death. HIV, like I was saying, is a very smart virus and what it does is once it enters the bloodstream via the three forms that I just mentioned, it specifically finds white blood cells more specifically, CD4 cells. And what it does is it enters the CD4 cells, multiplies itself, it kills and reprograms the purpose of this CD4 cell, this T cell, then finds other CD4 cells 
enters it, multiplies, and does the process over and over and over again. Basically, the virus begins to multiply itself at such a rapid rate because it's multiplying itself in one CD4 cell. Like, multiple copies are happening, right? So CD4 cells detect that there's a virus, detect that there's an enemy, and it tries to start reproducing itself. But guess what? Now they can't reproduce itself as much. So the viral load increases and the CD4 decreases. Eventually, how HIV turns into AIDS, if your CD4 count reaches below 200, okay, you've officially entered AIDS status. The thing that's going to take you into AIDS status is also if your body cannot fight off opportunistic diseases. So once your body starts, like for instance, if you uh, if you have HIV um, untreated typically, and then you get pneumonia or uh, bronchitis or liver disease or kidney disease or you know your body just starts shutting down, these are called opportunistic viruses, opportunistic diseases. If you start getting opportunistic viruses your CD4 count does not matter. It doesn't matter if your CD4 count is high. If you have HIV and then you are just getting sick, you move on from HIV to AIDS. Let's talk about my situation and how everything went down. So as I said, the day of the video when I got punched in the face, that was actually March 12th, okay? The night of March 12th onto March 13th. That was the first video I ever posted. The second video I posted, I was in Barbados. And let me tell you, when I was in Barbados, I still didn't know that I was um, sick. Like, I didn't know I had HIV. All right, so within a few weeks of HIV infection, flu-like symptoms such as fever, sore throat, and fatigue can occur. Then the disease is usually asymptomatic until it progresses to AIDS, like we mentioned. AIDS symptoms include weight loss, fever, night sweats, fatigue, and reoccurring infection. So let me explain to you my experience. So I got infected, I believe, on the night of March 12th, if not the week's um, following that. According to the CDC, the acute stage begins anywhere from two weeks to four weeks after um, the infection. So I went to the uh, urgent care in my, in my local hospital three times because I literally felt like I was dying for three weeks and I think the date started March 23rd. I can actually check. Hold up. Because I have my charts. It literally has all of my results. I have to scroll. Let me tell you. The amount of I'm still scrolling. Okay. On 3-31-2019, I was at the hospital. They tested if I was pregnant because I was throwing up. I was throwing up. I had um, cold sweats. I literally broke out in hives. And I have pictures and videos from my Instagram story that I'm going to try to find. And in I remember my mom came over. She was asking me about... You know how my little relationship was going with ugh, anyway and um i can't even look at salads the same way because literally that was a that was the first time that i threw up because of my acute sy symptoms i was throwing up every single day i would wake up perfectly normal you know like oh today i feel great finally whatever this is i shook it off no the day would go on and then y'all I would get the craziest fever, and then I would get cold sweats, then I would feel like I'm freezing, and then I would be hot, and it was just, it really felt, I thought I was dying, and lo and behold, I was dying, like my body was, there was a war going on inside of my body, and my immune system was losing. Anyway, they tested me for everything, child, they tested me for mono, they did a throat culture for um, sore throat or strep throat, um, yo, they tested me for pregnancy, listen, 331, they tested me for pregnancy, um, 4-4, 2019, they tested me for pregnancy, 4-9, they tested me for pregnancy, nothing the one thing they didn't test me for was hiv and i don't even know if they would have detected it in my blood at that point i'm not sure but they didn't test me for hiv and they tested me for everything else under the sun like syphilis gonorrhea everything chlamydia everything was negative and 
it was just a viral infection. They told me it's like your body's like we can't explain what it is, but it's a viral infection. It wasn't the same doctor. I saw three different doctors and none of them thought to test me for HIV. I don't know if they thought that maybe the way that I looked, the way that I um I don't know. I don't know if they thought that it couldn't happen to me, but they never tested me for that. That happened for about three weeks. Like literally every single day for about three weeks. And then um, about two days before the trip to Barbados, I felt miraculously better. I had lost so much weight. I'm also going to post pictures. I was really, really skinny. Um, just because I was throwing up so much, I couldn't hold down any food. You know, I was like dehydrated half the time. I lost a lot of weight, like maybe like 10 or 15 pounds. So my camera overheated and I don't remember what I was saying last, but... Um, I spent three weeks of feeling like your girl was dying. Let me tell you, I thought I was really dying. And for those of you guys that want to know, um, no, we're not even going to get into that. Okay. Something else about um, the transmission of HIV. It is very unlikely. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it is very unlikely for a man to get HIV from a woman who was HIV positive and without taking medication. So a woman who has the active virus and who is not undetectable, which we're going to get into a little bit later, she can have HIV, okay, and have sex with a man or woman, okay, but with a man and not give it to this man, okay, because uh, there has to be many factors at play. All right, she has to be like on her period. There has to already be an incision So she has to already have like an open for like the HIV virus to transmit That's why when you have a um, unprotected sex with a man who has HIV the moment that there's any kind of semen It doesn't even have to nut in you. It could be freaking pre-cum There is DNA in that pre-cum. Okay, the virus is in that and that's why it's so easy. It literally takes one time for a man to infect a woman. Let's get to my test results, okay? So the first time that I realized or I found out that I was HIV positive, I was suffering from a major yeast infection, a yeast infection that was just not going away. And I actually had a feeling that something was going on. I knew I knew something was not right inside of my body. I knew that I was going to receive results from the doctor the next day that I just had a feeling. I had a feeling to prepare, to just, you know, I'm going to get through this. And um, I made a video the day before I went to the doctors, actually. And, um, and I've never shared that video with anybody. And I might share it here on this channel, but... Um, I knew. I knew what was in store. I didn't know it was HIV, but I knew that there was something, something horribly wrong going on in my body. So I went on um, the Friday, I remember exactly. It was on a Friday, Friday, June 14th, 2019. And that is the first time I tested positive. And I want to say the first time I tested positive because they do have to do confirmatory results. So the first time you test positive, it could be a false um, positive. And that's what I was hoping for, for 10 days. Me being realistic and me understanding what the fuck was going on, I knew, I, I remember when I got sick. I remember when I thought I was dying. I've never even had the flu. I don't remember ever having the flu in my life, okay? And that was the scary, those three weeks in April, or at the end of March, early April, were the toughest weeks of my life. You know, just not knowing what's going on with your body is a terrible feeling. And it's, it's even more terrible when there's someone there by your side that knows what they did to you. And, you know, it's just sitting there talking about, oh, you know, I'm, you know, whatever. Anyway, it, the whole the whole thing was just a very confusing, um, heartbreaking situation. Okay, so anyway. 
something that I didn't mention with the CD4 cells. Okay, going back to CD4 cells, going back to the scientific. This is why I wanted to stay with the science because once I veer off to the storyline, it gets really crazy. And this is not why I am here. Um, CD4 counts in, in regular healthy human beings are between 500 to about 1600. And remember, you are moved from HIV to AIDS once your CD4 count is below 200. When I was diagnosed June 14, 2019, my CD4 count was at 507. So literally, they were fighting for dear life. And my viral load was at 2,219. So I had an active viral load. And the way that viral load is um, measured is per 200 milliliters of blood. So this is not like the only thing I had. Like it wasn't 2,000 copies in my body. It was 2,219 copies per 200 milliliters of blood. I don't know if this is 100% correct how I'm saying it. If there's other people that are more well versed than I am. By all means you can leave that in the comments below. But that's what I understood from what I read and from what my doctors told. The first medication that they put me on was Discovoy. And Discovoy, I guess, is what they have at the clinic. So, you know, they didn't ask me my preference or anything like that. They just put me on birth control and gave me Discovoy. So, Discovoy, you have to take while you're on birth control because it will not protect you from passing it down to your fetus. I didn't really like that medication because you, it was very strict as far as, like, you had to take it at a specific time every single day. And it has to be with the meal. That specific time situation was very, very hard for me because I didn't eat at the same times. I had a very unhealthy eating habit, so it would just really stress me out. I had to put an alarm clock, and if I was in the middle of something, I had to just stop and take the pills. I just felt like if I didn't take it at the same exact time every day, I was going to mess with my viral load. They switched me over to Complera. I stopped being on birth control, so I was just like, I only did one round of that depot, and I was done because... It was just giving me really, really bad side effects. And now I'm on Complera. Complera is what I'm on now. And again, with Discovoy and Complera, they're both one pill a day. They have like two or three antiviral drugs in one. Eventually, I do want to move on to a medication that I can just take whenever. And I don't have to worry about eating. Going back to my test results, right? On June 19th of 2019... Um, it says that my viral load was 43. My viral load decreased, okay, almost a thousand copies between the 14th and the 19th. So when I'm telling you that I was so close to being undetectable, some tests consider undetectable 50 copies, under 50 copies, under 40 copies, under 30 copies, under 20 copies of blood in your system. Like the tests from the hospital or the doctors that I go to, they consider the lowest amount so it's like 10 copies 20 copies the lowest amount possible that's what they consider undetectable so they don't go by the other test standards like 30 40 or 50 then on july 3rd it was under 30 copies so depending on the test that i would have taken i would have been considered undetectable viral loads lower than 30 copies can be detected but cannot be measured reliably so it's a very, 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 very little amount. By September 10th, your girl was undetectable. And this is just contingent upon my doctor's visit. I don't know exactly when I became undetectable. You know what I'm saying? It could have been a shorter period of time than that. My doctors were so shocked because I started my medication that Friday. Five days later, my viral load significantly dropped. So that is how good the medication of today like is. And I have a big smile on my face because I'm just so thankful. I understand that like to many others it may seem like I'm in a very unfortunate situation, but I am just so thankful that I am, you know, living with what I'm living with in 2020, you know, 2019 and not back in the day and I really want to say thank you so much to LGBTQ community um mainly to mainly to the homosexual men let's be let, let's point it out let's be serious mainly to gay men thank you so much because i've watched so many videos so many documentaries and these people really put their bodies on the line trying to find a cure people were dying so quickly like from within months 
like literally HIV entered the system and, and literally within months to a year, two years, people were dying. And people were so ignorant and homophobic and and just closed-minded that um, the stigma is still the same in 2000. I am still currently undetectable. I just went to the doctors last week and undetectable honey i got diagnosed june 2019 i became undetectable on my third doctor's visit it was so simple so what does undetectable mean hiv medicine can make the viral load so low that the test can't detect it that's called an undetectable viral load so right now if i were to take an hiv test you know an at-home hiv test or anywhere else my hiv exam would come out negative if you have an undetectable viral load, you have effectively no risk of transmitting HIV to an HIV-negative partner through sex. Most people can get the virus under control within six months. I'm proof of that. Right here, I want to read to you a little statistics. Pregnancy, labor, and delivery. So that's 1% or less. But women who are HIV positive can indeed have a healthy HIV-negative baby as long as you are undetectable and you stay on your meds throughout your entire pregnancy there should be no problem so if you think your life is over honey it has just begun okay what has my life been like since my diagnosis well it was a roller coaster i didn't want to go outside if it wasn't work i like felt like other people knew like i would be hanging out with my girls that didn't know everything would be cool you know what i'm saying and then like it would hit like you have hiv and they don't they're gonna live a normal life and you're not that shit would just like really hit me like a ton of bricks and it would just be such a debbie downer and i would have to really fight my thoughts because i had to realize that in that moment am i okay like in that moment that i'm experiencing like this realization that i'm hiv positive am i healthy yes uh do i have a roof over my head yes uh, do i have access to the best medications and doctors that i can possibly find yes there was no problem so what was the problem you know what was the problem yeah man it took me about five months my girl's birthday in november she's a scorpio queen i went out for her birthday that was the first time since june I was so nervous. I literally was like having an anxiety attack. I had to call my best friend. Like, listen, I'm about to step outside in public and it's not for work. Like, I don't have to fake. Like, I want to talk to a person. You know what I'm saying? If someone came up to me, I would have to talk to them. And, you know, what do I say when they ask me about myself? Do I just say like, yeah, you know, also, I'm HIV positive. And they're like, what the fuck? I just wanted to buy you a drink. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that definitely took some time, but as I finally became single and I left that toxic relationship, I was able to really focus on myself and focus on loving myself and I still focus on that to this day. It's not like I that was that period of time and then everything is good now. No, I mean everything is it's great now. I still struggle sometimes with the remnants of what happened, with the remnants of that betrayal with the pieces of me that like you know were shattered in the ground you know what i'm saying that i had to pick up and just still maybe try to find the pieces to put together because i'm never gonna be the bianca or the thank you the binks that i was before june 19th that girl is dead literally she is dead and that was one of the hardest parts that i had to mourn because i do look at the barbados video and I envied, like, when I would see that video, I would literally envy that girl. Because it, sometimes I even feel like I struggle with being super happy. Or like, you know, joyful or like, you know, like, sexy. I know that little by little or however long it takes, the pieces of who I want to be or the person that i really am in essence because i'm more than just my body like we're all gonna grow old but my spirit and my soul my consciousness that's what matters getting diagnosed was really the beginning of a new life for me a new life that i'm still trying to get accustomed to that i'm still trying to 
figure out I don't cry anymore regarding my diagnosis I don't sit there and think like why me sometimes I do but <laughs> um, it's very short-lived and I've been able to find love again or love for the first time love within myself love in another human another human that loves me for who I am and you know, I knew that that was going to happen. One thing that I wasn't going to be was alone. I was not going to let this virus be an excuse for me not to find love. And I just want people, other women and men, out there watching this video to really get inspired. My camera keeps on overheating, but basically, guys, I just want to leave you guys with this. And ladies, with this. You know, no matter what news you get, our lives are so vulnerable. Like... They really are so understand that hard times will come. You will be faced some trials and tribulations that you never thought you would face, especially as we get older, you know. And the only thing that we can control is how we react to it. So anyone that's dealing with this or similar, anything similar, just know that you are in control of your life. No matter what, like you are the one that's in control. You decide the the standards that you want your life to be in and all hope is not lost no hope is lost <laughs> you know um this is just a new way to look at life and that's the way that i see it you know you will find love again if that's what you want people will accept you if that's what you're afraid of and the people that don't accept you that's good you should really take that and see like this is not someone that's meant to be in my life but let me tell you that once i came out or once i was open to people like i, I at first i did little by little one friend here one friend there and then i finally went you know and and went made a public post on my instagram and i literally got support from people that i never thought i would have gotten support from and then I saw the true colors of other people that I really, I already knew that they didn't mess with me or fuck with me to begin with. So really, because you're going to realize who's really there for you because they care about you and who's really there for you because you're convenient. So I hope that you guys stay safe, stay protected, you know, always strap up. If there's a key advice that I would give anyone is do not have unprotected sex with anyone that you do not see their test results beforehand. Okay, because someone telling you, oh yeah, you know, I just got tested, you know, a month ago, two months ago, they, they could be lying. There's some men that go their entire lives without being tested and they're 30, 40, 50 years old, their entire lives, okay? I We need to normalize getting tested and talking about this because Sex, like STDs should not be a stigma. We all have sex. So why is it that we can't talk about something so common and so important such as STDs and getting tested? I don't think that um, a chlamydia or anything, I don't think that makes anyone nasty. Just it's a very unfortunate scientific situation. Get that shit treated. Get that shit under control and be vocal. Talk to your partners about it, you know? Do the right thing. And don't have unprotected sex with nobody. Ladies, do not have unprotected sex with no man that does not want to show you papers, okay? Because they could be like, does it look like I have something? And they could very well be dying inside, okay? But if you're going to have unprotected sex with someone, know that there is a 100% risk of anything happening. So, with that being said, I really hope you guys have a happy and safe holidays. And... I love you guys all very much. Thank you for your support. Mwah. Basically, what they told me at the hospital was shit. Um, they think that it's like a viral infection of some sort. What? I have no idea. 
But the one thing that I do know is A, it's not contagious because it's not a bacterial infection. B, there's nothing to treat it with. You just have to let the sickness or whatever virus I have. So, um, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. It's really overwhelming, but I'm trying to stay positive and in high spirits. And this bud smells like my most. I've been crying all day. And, um, yeah, that's it. I mean, there's nothing else for me to do. Drink their flu, continue fucking up my kidneys, Tylenol, NyQuil, all this other good shit. But... Mm-hmm. <sighs>